We are God's workmanship. That's the topic. Or craftsmanship, or handiwork. This is astounding. This is very, very important. Ephesians two, verse eight onwards. For it is by grace you have been saved、um, through faith, and this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. So the、um, the reason God recreated us, if you like, we were created, you know, the moment we were conceived in our mother's womb, and then we were delivered into this world, and God brought us in this world, etc. And then God recreated us when we. Believe in Christ and put our faith in Christ. Okay, for it is by grace you have been saved. Once when when we were saved, we were immediately regenerated or recreated. Okay, by faith we saved by the grace of God. It is by grace you have been saved through faith, which is the gift of God. Okay, the, even the faith is the gift of God. For we are, no one can boast. Okay, so we are. Uh, this is this is not our own work, so that no one can boast. Verse ten: We are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. So God recreated us to do good works. That's the thing: to do good works. You know, God didn't save us and then leave us just have a good time as much as possible in this world and go to meet Him in heaven for eternity. No, while we're on earth, we have to do good works because that's what He. He saved us for. He recreated, you know. He, we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus. Jesus to do good works. That means we're recreated. The, we call regeneration, recreation to do what to do good works. The pre, means the previous time when we were our old self, we could not do good works well. Even if you don't believe in Christ, you do a lot of good works. Okay, there's a, there are non-believers, non-Christians who do a lot of good works. But they're still not acceptable in the sight of God because the good works are in the in the image of self ability, self reliance, and self salvation. You know, the entire concept of salvation is that it is by grace, by the grace of God we're saved. Nothing to do with what we can do or what we have done. Okay, so now God recreated us in Christ Jesus to do good works. Now let me explain what.、Uh, Cousins and I've studied Bible. Say this is very, very interesting. All right, the verse ten onwards, right? Um. So, so verse ten, handiwork. The Greek word handiwork can can connote can connote can connote the skillful work of a craftsman, the craftsmanship. The transformation of believers from death to life is so radical that. It is considered a new act of new、uh, creation. Now that transformation is so powerful that recreation, when we are regenerated, the minute we accept Christ into our lives, believe in Him as our Lord and a Savior, that minute that transformation begins. And that transformation is so radical. Carson said that so radical that it is considered as a new act of creation. As I say just now, it's a recreation. Why is it recreation? Because it is so radical. That means God has to recreate you one more time. That's what it means to be born again. You've been born before, but why again? See, same thing. You were born before, the, so you born again, called reborn or rebirth, where we were being created by God before when we were born into this world, and God has to recreate us, the same manner, same fashion, right? So. The 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 it's a new act of creation,、um, Ephesians four twenty four. Now this is very powerful.、I'll、read from verse twenty two onwards. You were taught with regards to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires. You see, your old self is being corrupted by its deceitful desires. There's so many people gone astray because of deceitful desires of the heart. You know your heart's desire. Their heart's desire has long has desired the wrong thing. Okay, has been deceived, and a lot of this wrong thing is a result of being deceived. Deceived by who? By the culture of the world, by the brainwashing, by the by the culture, but above all, by the liar, the father of all lies. 
the devil. Father of all lies, Satan. Satan has that uh, propensity, that ability, has that genius, that power, that craftiness to prowl around like a roaring lion to deceive, deceive, deceive. First time he deceived us, Eve, and then deceived Adam. Now he's come down and deceived everybody, whoever is in his path, you know, unless Christians begin to really take care of ourselves, will be deceived. So you see, you were taught, you were being, you were, uh, you were, your life were being corrupted by deceitful desires. And now, you know, God told you Ephesians chapter 4, verse 22 said, to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your minds. Now, this is important now. You be made new in the attitude of your minds. Did you get that? You cannot ignore theology, guys. You cannot ignore philosophy. You cannot ignore thinking. I'm not saying that you have to get a, what do you call, master of a MA in philosophy or whatnot. I've done a lot of philosophy in my MD class, and I like some of them. I really find it very dry, some of them, but it's very, very good because you need to know how the world thinks. You know, and not everybody needs to know Plato and Aristotle and uh, Immanuel Kant and all these guys, you know, <laughs> necessarily. But it's, but, but it's good to know some of them, all right? Because you need how, if you don't know some of this, you will never understand how, where does this postmodernism come from? Okay, where does this uh, relativism come from? Everything's relative, you know, uh, this kind of a diminishing of God, you know. It's very, very evil. Marxism and all these things, so they, they, they really try to corner God in the corner. For, for example, the, uh, not Renaissance, the, um, the, the, what do you call, uh, the, the, the science and uh, prosperity of science in the uh, enlightenment, that's the word, enlightenment time. Um, you know, essentially science took over and knocked out God and put it one side. So, so that, that is attitude of your mind. Now, mind itself is not enough because it says the attitude of your mind. Did you get that? The word attitude is so important. So mind means your knowledge, your, your ability to understand, to comprehend, you process it. It's, it's called logical thinking. It's called rationalize it. It's critical thinking. All this is good stuff. But, you know, if you rationalize the world and rationalize God out, that's basically what the philosophy have been doing all this time. Um, but in the Word of God, you need to process it. We need to think through it. We need to rationalize it. We need to meditate upon the Word of God. When you say meditate upon the Word of God, you actually think through why, how, and connect with the Spirit of God. This, that needs special revelation, folks. You know, there's a common revelation, common grace where you can go to anywhere. Uh, basically, um, you know, they uh, like the world, they don't need Jesus, and they, they understand how the rocket goes to the to, to Mars and that you see all these trees and oxygen science can do all these things without Christ because it's a common grace but to really get to know who God is to know the God of salvation to receive the salvation you require special revelation so that's where Psalm chapter 1 makes a lot of sense when we blessed is a man who meditates upon the Word of God day and night it's like a tree planted by streams of streams of water, streams of river, okay, because you meditate. What does meditate mean? Meditate means to think through, think again, think again. Why? Rationalize, asking how, who, and just meditate where you are in life and connect with the intersection with the Word of God and the Spirit of God and prayer and surrender to God. That's where it's going to become very, very powerful. That is what it means to recreate your attitudes, recreate your minds, and to put on the new self created to be like God, in true righteousness and holiness. How can you possibly to be like God in true righteousness and holiness without recreation of your attitudes? Attitude is almost, is, people say it's everything. I would say, yeah, a lot of, it's very powerful attitudes, okay? So that is called recreation. Second Corinthians 5, 17, another good one. Therefore, if anyone's in Christ, the new creation has come, you see? If you are in Christ, the new creation has come. You are a new creation. Why is a new creation? Because you were an old creation by God before, but now you are the new creation, right? So, so it, it's not like, oh, you are now a new person, a new, you're a new person. Wow, man, he's changed. He's a Christian now. He doesn't smoke, he doesn't gamble, and now he's so much more courteous, polite, and all this. He's a new person. No, 
He's a new creation. You know, this word transformation is going to be a new thought to recreate from ground zero up. Everything changed. That is, that is what um, transformation uh, in, in Christ Jesus will involve and, and has to. That's why you find a lot of, a lot of so Christians struggle. And no, it doesn't mean that I, I struggle too. We still struggle. But struggle in itself is not bad. Because as long as you struggle in Christ and seek Christ, seek God, it's a process of maturing and that you become being recreating our attitude. Look at the book of Psalms. Half of the book of the Psalms is lamenting, crying, God, seeking God. Where are you? David's running away from his his uh, killer, from Saul, from from a... Uh, from his own son Absalom and all these guys, Philistines, Philistines, and all these things. Yeah, you know, that's 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 literally half of uh, half of the Book of Psalms. It is totally legit. It's fine, but in the process, David got transformed, renewed. He is recreated. Hallelujah. So we need a new creation. That's why the Bible say, "Therefore, anyone is in Christ, a new creation has come. The old is gone. The new is here." The new is here. We have to, you know, becoming a Christian is not just by grace and be saved and uh, by faith alone, but you become a new creation. If the new creation doesn't come out of that grace and salvation by faith, I doubt there's a real new creation. I doubt there's a real salvation. You got that? That's why it is really important. This I learned from the Reformed theology. The scope of this creation is... is it's more than the individual. It also includes the community. Okay, verse 14 to 16. For he himself is our peace, who has made the two groups. One has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility, by setting aside in his flesh the law and his commands and his regulation, his purpose to create in himself one new humanity out of the two, thus making peace, glory, glory. That's, you know, the two sides, the Gentiles and, and the Jews are now a one in Christ. Hallelujah. Oh man, we need community to have true, okay? And this is Galatians six fifteen. Neither circumcision or uncircumcision means anything. What counts is the new creation. Again, new creation. I love this word, new creation. Maybe I should plant a church called the the church will be called New Creation Church. Glory, and together the new creation of the individual and the community anticipates the cosmos. Wow, this twelve minutes. I'll carry on next time. Thank you. God bless.